Good afternoon, Harlem and uh, Harlem of the world. Uh, I'm Terry Wisdom, and this is Harlem Network News. Uh, for those of you who are just joining or it's your first time, uh, Harlem Network News is a new media platform. We started uh, about a year and a half ago at the onset of COVID. Um, it is a project that we had been thinking about and planning for a long time. But COVID made us have to just jump in the deep water and assure that the community was informed. Harlem Network News is the voice and the drumbeat of Harlem and the Harlems of the world. So it has been quite a journey uh, through Black Lives Matter, uh, the murder of uh, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, uh, the March on Washington, uh, as well as uh, the election, the insurrection, uh, the inauguration and so on. And we are still here. Um, today, uh, I am honored to have a guest from the International African Arts Festival. I have here with us uh, Baba Adeyemi, Adeyemi Bendele, as well as Sister April Silver. I'm gonna just have uh, Baba Adeyemi um, share with us what is the International African Arts Festival? What has the journey been? And it is the 50th anniversary and celebration. So Baba Adeyemi, thank you. Sister Terry, thank you so very much for uh, inviting us on to the Harlem Network News. And I smiled when you were telling the story, you got down near the end, you said, and, and we are still here. And that's exactly <laughs> That's, <laughs> that's us, 50 years. Uh, our theme this year, Hamsini Ni Dahabu, which means uh, 50 is gold. It's Kiswahili and 50 is gold. So the International African Arts Festival, we are here. We have struggled um, mightily. And uh, we have reached this. Last year, we, we limped through with the COVID situation. We made the best of that situation by our first virtual festival. Um, it was an interesting experience, one that we learned from and that we are continuing to now uh, foster with this year's festival. Um, we began primarily as a street festival, combination street festival and graduation ceremony for the Uhuru Sasa School, which was one of the first black independent schools uh, in the New York City area. And the first year we had a little street festival, but then we said, you know, let's make this a bit more exciting. And so it took on a life of its own and it was first the African Street Carnival. Yes. One of the unique features about the festival is that it continues to grow and outgrow every space that is that occupied, that it, it has occupied. So we were on Claver Place in Brooklyn. We outgrew that. We moved to Boys and Girls High School. And folks who have been there, you know, in the early days, we were just underneath the building. Um, yes. And uh, it, oh, Terry, you, you, you shaking your head. You go back that far with us? Oh, of course I do. Uh, oh, okay. I, uh, I would bring uh, all my children uh, every year to the festival and they all were right. very excited. And um, I think my son, his drum group, uh, won uh, the contest of the kids thing one year. So okay. no festival, uh, it, we're connected. <laughs> right. Thank so you. then you, you were probably there when we were underneath and I, you know, I, I remember there were some times that you could not go from one side to the other, absolutely shut down. And so we moved out into the field and there were stories about how that first experience went, but nonetheless, we moved into that field. And I would say probably in about three, four years, that field was totally full. It was an African village in its truest sense. Yes. Um, anything in the African world was there. But more importantly, what you said earlier, though, it was and still is a family affair. Absolutely. That folks are able to bring their children. They can bring their elders because they're not going to be embarrassed by anything that's on our stage. In fact, the elders love it because it connects them to some of the stuff 
where they were. It, yes. For me, um, my role is, is MC, and I've been doing it, except for the periods when I was out of the country now. Um, I don't know. I have the greatest job at festival. One of the things that happens is that with children, you know, sometimes their parents get lost. And that's what we say. Because the <laughs> children are safe. They up on the stage with us, right. and they're having fun, and we put the announcement out, and then, you know, eventually the parents show up. But there aren't many places where you can go and feel that that relaxed and and at peace and know that your family is safe. So that's that's been our 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 genesis and our journey. Yes, thank you very much. And um, I'm glad that uh, you just brought that up in terms of the family and all of that because um, you know teenagers. As, you know, especially now, just to engage the youth and the teens in that way. And I know my children, um, up until teenage, they were always excited to go to festival. A lot of their friends actually worked the festival, uh, oh. Taye, boom, you know. So it was just um, a very connected um, experience. And I mean, honestly, I was at uh, the, the, the first African festival carnival at Claver Place, I was there. Really? You know, of course, yes. I remember always coming to the East for shows and one of my friends uh, is a performer and I think she was singing with like Jean Kahn. You know, so it, it goes back, um, it goes back away, you know, yes. and it's important to just have that uh, full circle, especially with everything that is going on at this time to really engage the youth, the families, um, the intergenerational uh, significance. So thank you. But, Terry, I, I got to ask you, did you sneak out the house to come to the East way back when? Excuse me, no. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, no. <laughs> you know. Uh, I, was, I was a full-blown college student. But oh, actually, right. maybe initially, yeah. I might have been in my latter high school years. Oh, uh, <laughs> OK. April <laughs> had a very similar journey. And I want to uh, introduce April. Yes, thank uh, you. We're on our conversation. Thank you. and. Yeah. For those of you who are just joining, uh, this is Harlem Network News. I'm Terry Wisdom, and I'm here uh, with uh, members of the International African Arts Festival that's going to happen uh, this weekend in Brooklyn. Sister April, thank you. Yes, I am very happy to be here. Um, always an honor to, to, to be anywhere near Baba Adeyemi uh, Bendele, so so thank you uh, for the invitation. But I want to hear what Baba was saying that what the similar experience was. Well, both of you came through festival as young people. You were there. Uh, yes. In your case, you became very active because office manager at one point, and then you um, created your own company and uh, began to do much of the advertising for a festival and you are currently an honorary board member. So you, you've been on this, this journey with us, you know, even when you were limping around, you still came to festivals. <laughs> out there with I'm my sorry, cane. That. <laughs> no, 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 out there with my cane. That, that, was, uh, that was recent, that was 2017. I had sciatica. So any audience member that's ever had that, um, you know, you gotta have a lot of love if you go into the festival and you have sciatica. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but you know what, my my um my experience with festival did not really come before the nineties. Um, I was I had returned to New York after having graduated uh, from college in D.C. and I would go to the festival and was in awe. So this was early nineties, um, and it was Joanne Cheatham. God bless her soul. May she rest okay. in peace. Yeah. that that um, told me about an opening at the festival as for the uh, office coordinator. And I was teaching at the time, teaching at, um, where were, uh, gosh, not 271. I did teach at the historic 271, 258. That's mm -hmm. where I met Joanne Cheatham, Junior High School 258 in Bed-Stuy, okay. Brooklyn, okay. when I was a uh, um, um, language arts teacher. I think they had stopped using the phrase English teacher and tried to change it to language arts. Um, so, so from there, uh, I did get the position. Um, this was in the mid nineties. 
And uh, I came under the tutelage of Baba Mze Moyo. And, and I say this all the time, if I know anything about Black Brooklyn, um, the institutions, the people, um, it's because I sat at his feet yes. um, and just soaked up all of the knowledge and uh, got the inner workings of the festival. So, so I have my, my 25th anniversary shirt. You can't see it all the way. I'm going to lift it up a little bit. Oh, but thank you. Thank you yeah. for sharing. It's beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful. I came in right when the, when it went from African street festival to international African arts festival. And that was at the 25th anniversary year. So shout out to um, the spirit, the the never ending spirit of Baba Mze Moyo to um, um, Baba Minsa Wali, who was, um, or is, you, you know, a, a founder, of course. Um, and of course, Baba G2 uh, Wawusi. So it's just so many people we could go on. Um, and also uh, shout out to Greer Smith. I wanna make sure we get some of the, the, the women leaders in there too, who helped bring forth the the institution part you you know and uh, so many different things administratively so that was my role um as office coordinator to try to keep the office going and then i got to do the talent search uh, the youth talent search i was the talent youth talent search coordinator so to your point baba um many hats many hats mm -hmm. i've worn over the years for the more than 25 years that i've been with the organization Okay, yeah. well, thank you uh, for sharing. Um, festival is certainly um, what I call a New York, and I want to say uh, kind of world icon, you know, in terms of just an activity that has continued. But um, I'm Terry Wisdom. This is Harlem Network News. And uh, you can find us on Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook, harlemnetworknews.com. And uh, soon uh, we're going to be on Clubhouse. So we can really do the 24 hour thing. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I did, I did, I don't want to go further, uh, Baba uh, Adeyemi, without, uh, and you segued into that, um, Sister uh, April. But I want us to talk about some of those great ancestors that helped to lay the foundation and some of the elders that are still laying the foundation. I think that that's really significant because in this kind of world that we live in, for us to have an institution that has lasted um, this period of time, 50 years and is still strong and is still growing and it has mutated from one location to the other, but it's still here and it's still strong. So we must salute. And I know you had the um, event that was a tribute uh, to the ancestors and libation. But if you could just speak about those ancestors so that we properly um, open the way for the rest of the conversation. Thank you. Absolutely, Terry. Thank you for that. Um, we have to begin with um, G2 Weyusi. Yes. Who was the, uh, the institution builder that uh, was able to bring together the people who built the institution. And I think that's significant to understand. Uh, G2 was not a um, somebody looking for limelight. G2 was about building institutions that help our people to identify or develop an identity, a purpose, and a direction. And he, he was the type of leader that he knew people and was able to tap them and they trusted him. And I say they because I'm a part of that. And okay. one of the things about the East and the, the festival that you will find important is that it is one of the true Pan-African institutions that exist in that everybody and their grandmama and granddaddy was welcome into the East and consequently into all that we produced, which would be the festival. But that was a tribute to G2. We were not in any particular camp. We were open. We've had Minister Farrakhan. You mentioned Maulana Karenga, H. Rap Brown, um, Sister Sonia Sanchez, a host of people um, who felt members of the Black Panther Party, the Republic of New Africa. That was a 
that was a place where people could gather. And that was a tribute to G2. And then along came MZ, who um, yes, his role yes. was really as the, um, the chair of the parent body of the Uhuru Sasa School. Mm. And they took on a tremendous amount of responsibility in terms of actually running the institution. And they were the ones that in conjunction with G2 came up with the idea for this festival. And you know what they say about an idea whose time had come, that our community, except for um, uh, the carnival, Labor Day Carnival, we didn't have anything else that, that brought us together in that fashion, that celebrated our tradition and our culture. And so um, it just grew because folks were hungry for that. And you know, uh, music and the arts is significant because when we start looking and hearing the music of that time, it was all about coming together. And we, what they say in, in the movement, we operationalized that. And so we had MZ, we had Mama Kuumba, which was, was one of the most creative people you, you um, could ever meet. You know, there's some people when they, when, when they get the title Mama, it just fits them. It just fits them because that's who they are. And um, she helped, in fact, the piece that she did that was significant and she may have worked with, with you, April, was to create the space for the children to do arts and crafts and little things. So when you brought the family, it was something for the children to do. And who was doing that? Mama Coomba. And so, uh, and then we had uh, Akilah Mashariki who came out of IBM but brought yes, with her yes. those, those internal organizational skills, which are still um, being offered to this day. So we've had a lot of people, but I also want to point to the folks that did those little things. For example, the brother who made that East sign. Mm. He was a craftsman. He sculpted that piece. He also built the stage that we used for probably about 25 years. And every year wow. he came and put that thing together. And it wasn't nuts and bolts, you know, he was a craftsman, so it was, everything fit. Every year he came, put it together. The mm -hmm. folks who Beautiful. did our flyers and posters, all of them are absolute works of art. Absolute work of art. Yes. Um, Clarence Eastman, who has no, is no longer with us. Another brother, Jim Dyson. Those are some of the folks who did those other little things that they didn't get a lot of recognition for, but it was so significant. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, for those of you who are just joining, uh, this is Harlem Network News, and I am here uh, with a founding member of the International African Arts Festival, and that is Baba Adeyemi Bandele, and I'm also here uh, with one of the organizers, uh, and that is Sister April Silver. Um, the fest, and we were just speaking about the foundation of the festival and really just speaking about our institutions. And I do know that there are things that we all look to go to and participate, at least here in New York, and I believe from around the country. Um, we look to go to BAM, the you know African Dance Fest, then we look to go right after that to a uh, festival. And then we look to go to uh, the uh, you know, parade on the parkway. And then we look to go to Kwanzaa Fest. What you know? happened to Harlem Day? It, yeah, it, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm escaping it. Let me, let me not stop. Oh. It's Harlem Day is really Harlem Month. And that oh, is oh, coming okay. up. I didn't want to get you in just, trouble. Just, I, was, <laughs> I, I, I can't be amiss with that. Cause I was actually just on a meeting and a Zoom with Lloyd Williams and the oh, Greater Lord. Harlem Chamber of Commerce. So hey. Harlem Week is happening. It is going to be live and virtual. Um, I believe the main day when there's vendors, but they have a whole lot going on. So, but I'm, I'm just speaking and thank you for that. And we also have, uh, which many people are not familiar with, and that is something that Harlem Network News does cover. And that's the uh, African American Day Parade. And that happens every year. It's never been covered on major TV, but thousands of folks come out, grassroots institution, uh, bands coming from all our HBCUs and 
Philadelphia. So I'm saying we have some institutions and it's important that we hold our institutions and the uh, Interna Inter uh, International African Arts Festival has been very successful in doing that. So I um, salute you and it's good to understand what the foundation of that is because of course, that is in fact um, what we call nation building. You know, Absolutely. so um, that's a, a excellent thing. Now, uh, either uh, Sister April or Baba Adegeme, if you would speak to um, what with the festival, it's a cultural force, it's an economic force, and it is a spiritual force. So, and, and it's a holistic force for our community. So if you would speak to the different aspects of what happens at festival. I know there are many, many vendors that come like from all over the world and participate and many, uh, you know, folks who come out to buy those products, some that they can't get anywhere else. So if you would share that, there's great entertainment. And of course, there's the spiritual uh, part where we have a little shrine, a big shrine to all the ancestors. So if you would just share some of what happens at festival. And in Harlem Network News, we are really set up to um, uh, just, as the young people say, drop knowledge. So we don't assume that everybody that is listening to us knows about festival. You know, some people are born after that time or they mm -hmm. haven't gotten to it. So we want everybody to be fully aware of what this is. And in speaking, we are painting a virtual picture of uh, what one can expect. Thank you. Very good. What they can expect is everything you just said. <laughs> <More. laughs> you know, I mean, you, you hit all the points, absolutely. But you know, and, and segueing to that though, you talked about the, the crafts and things that folks will be able to purchase there. But one of the things that, and a major reason why the festival has been able to survive and thrive over these years, up to the point when we had to leave Boys and Girls High, was because um, one, we were in an institution in the community that respected us and gave us access to it. And so once we were able to get the access to it, then we controlled that space. Next, we had this incredible, incredible amount of artisans and craftspeople who were willing to come out and to some cases display, but oftentimes to, to uh, sell these things that they've been working on all year. And so this festival owes its existence to these vendors, because we we get some contributions from the um, city, uh, the city council people, state uh, council uh, representatives, and so on, and we appreciate that. Parks department, etc. But the bulk of our money, what allows us to move forward every year, uh, are these vendors and craftspeople people who come from all over the African world, as you mentioned. When I do roll call and I, I ask about where they're from and you hear Senegal, Tanzania, South Africa, Egypt, Nairobi, the Bronx, mm -hmm. Delaware, Jamaica, Trinidad, Guyana, Grenada, artisans who come and some of them have been coming for years, years. In fact, you talked about your son and, 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 and your family. Yes. Well, yes. in a lot of cases, some of these places, these businesses are not being run by the children. Hello? Yes. Being run by the children. That's what institution building is all about. It's not a fly-by-night stuff. You know, and, and I mentioned, by the way, when we talk about events that happen at the festival, um, one year when we were at Boys and Girls High, we had a child born on the field. Mama didn't oh want to leave and got too late. Wow. And uh, the little, little girl's name is Son Anaya. I'll never forget. And oh. every year after that, she came and we introduced her from the stage. But oh. you know what? If we had to have an event like th something happen like that, I would rather it be a birth than a death. We Absolutely. have never had any foolishness associated with the festival. Yeah. You know? But I think also um, 
April journey is also significant in terms of the internal workings of the festival. Um, my daughter, she too Sorry, was I at the, the children's festival um, uh, carnival piece. And um, my son coordinated activities. My other son is the electrician there. Uh, okay. My other son is responsible for the maintenance. So I know, and, and listen, their children are working there. <laughs> so, okay. yes. you know, we got three generations. Yeah. And, the, and, that, and that speaks to the economics. It speaks to uh, passing down uh, the tradition because, you know, like I said, I know that um, several of uh, my daughter and my son's friends work the festival. Mm -hmm. So that was like part of the attraction, you know, Baba MZ's, you know, children at that time, teenagers. So that was part of it because their friends work the festival. So they were there. So this was a highlight even for teenagers uh, to come to. And then for there to be performances, uh, the drum group that uh, Baba Kahende had and, you know, just winning the drum group for the festival, that was a big thing out of all the entertainment for an African drum group to win, you know, was a, a big, a big statement. So, um, well, if you, yes, I'm sorry, go right ahead. You, you know, Terry, here's the challenge that we face though. And it is the challenge that April has um, taken on to some extent, not fully yet, but um, we've got to now be able to communicate with those young people because a lot of them are not coming out like they used to. And it might be because we have not uh, effectively uh, communicated with them. And so April has designed a lot of the, the outreach stuff that we're doing and she may want to talk about that. And also for our listeners, how they can get more information about the festival. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, and uh, we're going to go to Sister April, who's going to share that information. And those of you who are just joining, this is Harlem Network News. And please share this Facebook with all your friends, because that is how we move forward. You know, we have this opportunity to really uh, market ourselves. Thank you. Yeah, yes, I will add, um, I am uh, in the communications and marketing field like you, Terry, um, uh, behind the scenes though, you know, where you're producing the content, which, which is so important and so needed. Um, thank you for persevering past <laughs> COVID to, to make this yes. platform happen yeah. Yeah. Um, with thank all you. of your history and knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, but I work on the other side of communications and marketing I'm the former publicist for the festival, but right now Sharon Gordon and Nana Ose Williams, who the two of them, you know, need all of their props that are just due for their work. Um, but but typically I'm behind the scenes. So so when the designs come out, when the press release comes out now, you know, or any kind of copy or event descriptions or whatever, or the journal for that matter. Uh, my background is such that people are like, April, can you check to see if we have any typos, you know, <laughs> which is, which is my, which is my joy. you like, I'm a writer and an editor by trade. And my company is a killer work songs and we run that communications agency. Um, but it is my joy to, to help uh, organizations like the festival uh, tighten up the message or enhance you know, not necessarily creating the message or the design at all, but it is my joy and my pleasure to help get that message out there. And so though I resigned as, as, as publicist for the festival, uh, as I've said on so many occasions, I can't ever leave. I've been with the festival on the inside since the mid nineties. And, um, you know, like I said, you know, having different capacities was a junior member of the board when there was that such a position, okay. um, but I can't ever leave. So even when I leave, I don't leave. And so what I did this year was um, in response to the fact that the festival as an organization, as a nonprofit organization lost so much money, uh, like so many other organizations did last year. Um, I said to Dr. Shagun Shabaka, um, can I let me help by doing an online camp uh, fundraising campaign? 
Um, that's one of the services that my company, Aquila Work Songs, offers. And we've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for individuals and nonprofits over the years via crowdfunding. Uh, so we actually have right now a crowdfunding or uh, as also known as the um, online fundraising for the festival. And the goal that we started on April 1st was to raise um, $50,000 by today, actually. Okay. Um, that So we had gave ourselves 90 days to raise the $50,000. Um, and we're going to extend it uh, because we're only at about, I don't want to say only, because we're so grateful for people who have contributed, but we've raised $34,000. Uh, that $34,000. And so we're going to extend the, the, the push because we want more people to know that that your dollars, be it $5 um, or more, is so important. And we have had people give $5 on this GoFundMe crowdfunding campaign, right? And we've had people give $25, $100, $250, $300, $1,000. We actually had an anonymous donation of $15,000. Wow. Um, and like anonymously, so... So all of this is, you know, uh, you know, on GoFundMe, one could see, but that's how much people love this institution because when they see the festival, they see themselves, whether or not they identify as a Pan-African or, or whether or not they wear African attire or not, you know, whatever it is, they can see and feel the essence of what it means to be African and all of its expressions and all of its various um, manifestations. You know, when you come to festival, you are at home, you are amongst family, you are safe, you are protected, you are not judged, you are not discarded, you are not neglected. And, and as human beings, we crave that kind of emotional security, that kind of closeness, that kind of affirmation and that's what people say. Uh, that's what people say about us as an organization and what they feel. They see it when they go to the vendors, like Baba Adeyemi said. They see it on the stage. Um, they see it just walking around at the food court. You know, it's so many different ways that we can just feel one another and feel safe and not judged. And whatever our Africanness is in the diaspora or on the continent, that's what you see. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm saying this, Terry. Like you said, because I know you all know that the two of you know that, but for those who might not be familiar. Um, so what I'm really happy to announce, uh, Terry, like I said, I'm in the press. So I'm going to give you this exclusive. OK, thank you. <laughs> and we remember, did. you heard it first on Harlem <laughs> Network. Yes. News, okay? yes. And a lot of things are heard first on Harlem. Absolutely. We, we, that, like, a lot we, of times our stories are not covered. That is why. And, we and, and we appreciate the the media that respects us so you know we're not gunning for pop media outlets although we welcome it we recognize that people like what you're doing is important right Absolutely. so the so the scoop it well this is this part is not the scoop we have Iyanla Benzant who has been associated with the festival all 50 years thanks to the yes. the support and the connection uh, from Baba Adeyemi she gave us a wonderful video talking okay. about her fond memories. Oh, it's on the festival's okay. YouTube yeah. page. We're mm -hmm. going to repost it on the festival Facebook page. And so that was a wonderful 30 minutes where she articulated in a way that only Iyanla can do uh, the importance oh. of supporting uh, the festival financially in other ways. But mm -hmm. the scoop is the other video that's going to be posted today, June 30th, Wednesday, June 30th, is the interview that we did with uh, Ilyasha Shabazz. And oh, like you said, for those right. who don't know, yeah. she is the daughter of Dr. Betty Shabazz and Malcolm X. Okay. She is one of the six daughters yes. of Dr. Betty Shabazz and Malcolm X, mm -hmm. who um, is doing amazing things as a community activist, as a motivational Absolutely. speaker, as the author of five books. We just interviewed her. Um, that video has been edited and that's going live today. So she's going to talk about her lineage, 
her family and the importance of people coming out to festival. So, so you, you heard it first, right? Okay. <laughs> so, Thank you. Um, and uh, we're going to share that and I'll yes. make sure I get, uh, you can make sure that uh, I get any updates or press releases or any of that. Well, and, Sharon, uh, Sharon will do that. That okay, you know, that, okay. that's, I'll get that she's from the boss. Sharon. She's yes, the absolutely. Boss. And um, uh, thank you uh, for so much. And also, if you can repeat um, the name of uh, your association, because certainly with the kind of work you're doing, uh, Harlem Network News, we're interested uh, in you and your services. And I'm sure many of our listeners are because the marketing and getting the word out and also economics 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 is the key uh for us to move forward a lot of yeah. the disparities um we we understand uh not necessarily going political but uh that brother charles Barron has been able to get the um the the, the reparations uh bill passed in part of the government and is going to the next one so but the economic base is so important you know, in order yeah, for yeah. us to do the things, I mean, in many instances, we're working miracles, but the economics is important. So yeah, shout out to Ellen, Ellen Lee, who is the, the vendor coordinator. She's the boss when it comes to getting the vendors, as Baba Adeyemi said, which is the lifeblood of festival. But can I, to your yeah, point, yeah. we want to direct mm -hmm. people to www.iaafestival.org. Um, uh, that's the website where people can get information about what's happening for the 50th anniversary. Uh, that website will give you access for how to, to watch the festival via pay-per-view. If you can't come out to Commodore Berry Park this weekend, uh, you can also donate through that website as well. So it's www.iaafestival.org. Uh, you can go straight to GoFundMe if you wanted to donate. And uh, if you go to GoFundMe.com, oh, yeah, GoFundMe.com, search okay. International African Arts Festival, our page will pop up and you can donate that way. Um, but, but we're really happy to say that the, the program is there, the pay-per-view is there. Uh, you can buy advanced tickets. You can buy your ticket today for the festival this weekend. Uh, Baba Adeyemi, it was something else that we wanted to, to say well, about we, we do want to encourage um, as much advanced ticket sales as possible. It then makes the lines go faster because there'll be a separate entrance if you've got advanced ticket sales. But it is also one of the ways in which folks can just uh, continue to support the festival. Um, the other piece is that we're going to be COVID conscious, which means that we're going Thank to you. be encouraging uh, mask wearing. We will be taking temperatures at each of the entrances. And then we want to encourage, if you're not with your family, then give people space. If you're not with your family, give people space. If you're in a place and you're looking at things, just respect that. This thing is not over. And in fact, it's trying to make a comeback. So we have got to be particularly cautious. And uh, unfortunately, we have in our communities, the Harlems of the world, the lowest rate of vaccination. And so it means that, and we got the highest rate of death. They, they tend to go hand in hand. So um, those are the things that we definitely want to encourage as much advanced ticket sales as possible. We have VIP uh, tickets that will, uh, will have got a tent set up for you. We've got your gift package and so on. But you know, quite honestly, Terry, None of that really matters. It really is about if folk come with a consciousness that, hey, this is a festival that been around for a long time and I should do whatever I possibly could to support its longevity because it is one of the few things that we can show where we have, we have done this. We have yes, done this yes, and yes. we've got to show it. Reverend Daughtry has this thing. He says it's a poor frog that doesn't celebrate its own pawn. And forgive mm -hmm. me if I'm kind of, I it. We, we get you know, the message. <laughs> we probably don't really push festival like we need to. You know, a lot of folk, they just come because it's a family gathering every year. But we've also got to have a new consciousness that says, I have got to do whatever I can to ensure that this thing will be here, that this festival will continue, and that we start the journey to 100. 
Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Terry Wisdom, and um, this is Harlem Network News, and uh, we are here uh, speaking much truth to power uh, with uh, Baba Adeyemi and uh, Sister April of the International African Arts uh, Festival. Um, I want to know more about what's going to happen um, this year at festival, and I also would like to know um, because in the past, I know that there were different workshops that happened and, and uh, lectures and things of that nature. Um, is any of that going to happen uh, this year? And I know that we'll get to that later because I want us to really uh, hone in on what the activities are gonna be for this weekend, which I know start on Friday uh, the 2nd. So um, if you could just share a little bit and then let us know if there are going to be any workshops. Uh, you know, that people can uh, tune into either virtually or in person. Yes. Thank you. Um, the, we're going to have our regular standard program. However, we've got to go back a bit. Uh, so we do begin on Friday. Uh, gates open at 12. Children's activities kick off at that point. Uh, 3 p.m. We begin to prep for the, the main stage performances. Um, but well, let me just tell you real quick what Friday looks like. We've got the Drifters featuring Magic. magic. Uh, we've got Verbosity. We've got Charissa, the violin diva. And headliner for Friday, Angela Winbush. And then we end out, however, with a dance company out of Washington, D.C. called Farafina Khan. And if all you right. all have not experienced them, they... Oops. Okay, um, we, uh, this is Harlem Network News and I'm Terry Wisdom and um, we uh, just lost uh, Baba Adeyemi, um, one of the founding members of festival. And he was sharing about all of the activities that will be happening uh, starting on Friday. So Sister April, I know you can pick up and, and continue. Uh, yeah. And sure, Baba Adeyemi will, will get back. Well, hopefully he will come back because I don't have the specific order per day that he has. Okay. Um, but he does, like he did mention, Farafina Khan out of Washington, D.C. slash Maryland area are going to be there, an amazing um, uh -huh. uh, African drum and dance group. Um, uh, we also have um, Etu, uh, who's performing as well. Um, she performed with us at uh, Libation earlier this month in June. Yeah, beautiful, yes, yes. Yeah, and um, Razia Saeed is also returning. Uh, we have Molly Wap that's coming through as well. Um, I know he already mentioned the Drifters, um, yeah. but just- um, who, who are the Drifters? Let's not make an assumption. Who are the Drifters? Thanks. Right. <laughs> um, if you um, are a fan of the history of Black music, and you've ever heard the song, and you know, the, some of your viewers might have heard the song and didn't know that it was the Drifters. You know, that happens a lot, you, you know, okay. when yes. things get so popular, but Under the Boardwalk okay. is, is, you know, one of their claim to fame, for lack of a better phrase. Okay. Um, and they've done many others. So they are one of the legendary groups um, from the, the 50s and 60s that are, that are coming through. Um, and the Ohio Players is another, um, the Ohio Players Review. Um, so uh, that they're, they're, that group is coming through to pay tribute to some of the songs from the 70s with the Ohio Players. I can't even think of a song right now. I, all I can envision, uh, envision right now is the album covers. Okay. <laughs> you know? Um, but okay. I'm doing a I blanket. just wanted um, our audience to know that these are iconic, uh, groups that come out of the Black music experience out of different Motown sounds and so on and so forth. So I just wanted the audience to understand that. And well, we and, live in a world where you can Google anything. So I yeah. want you to know that the Drifters, the Ohio Players, these are significant uh, foundation for music oh, that you're Abba's listening back. to. Yeah. And 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 back. Sorry, but, um, and, I'm also back on my phone because... Okay. Uh, it's okay. Down here. My yeah. apologies, Terry. No, no problem. Okay. Yeah. 
So but people uh, will get a full experience of African music and all of its expressions, be it African-American music, African music from the Caribbean, from the continent, you know, from pop culture, people should know that they're going to get a full range of what it means to, to feel African music. So Baba, I was just trying to fill in the gaps, uh, which I can't do when it comes to you. So I'll, you know, I'll defer to you again. Yeah, she was speaking of some of the groups that are going to come out on Friday. And I think that you were wrapping that up. But the main thing is, uh, this is Harlem Network News, and I'm Terry Wisdom, is to know uh, that festival is happening at Commodore Barry Park. And um, if you would give the location, um, and it'll be Friday, Saturday, culminating on Sunday the 4th. You can also watch online. Um, you participate. Uh, there's a donation to come into the park, donation online. And suggested. Helps, uh, suggested. Terry, can we can we yes. say that it's Thank a suggested so donation? Yes. We can't um, because it's a public park. Right. Absolutely. Um, we're we're not a we cannot and would not refuse entry from anyone. That's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So you, no one has an excuse not <laughs> to come to festival, and it's not finances. But if you can, you donate. Just like we ask our yeah. listeners to donate to Harlem Network News because this is how we keep alive. We must support one another. So yeah. go ahead, Baba, please. I, I, I know our time is tight on us and I want to just touch on something very important too. Okay, On Thanks. Saturday morning, uh, I mentioned we will be having a street naming ceremony that will run from 10 to 12. Okay. And this will be naming this park for both Sam Penn, who was uh, one of the members of uh, Brooklyn Corps and also the chair of the uh, Fort Greene Senior Citizen Center, and mm -hmm. then the P2A Youth. So both of those yes. will be honored. And this right. Then we will march. We'll have oh. our annual parade from that down to the festival. Now, okay. when we arrive at the festival, we will be having a special remembrance ceremony to remember those who have passed during this COVID, folks. We have some vendors whom we have lost. People have mm -hmm. lost family members. Um, my wife, who is a nurse, has lost co-workers. Uh, mm. Co-workers have lost children. So it's got to be a time of also remembrance and, and just letting these folks know that they mattered, that they mattered. And, well, you know, so we've done our traditional one for all of the ancestors. But this time we want to focus on those folks who have lost family and friends. So that will be uh, 12 noon at the park, okay? And okay. then uh, we come Saturday, we begin out. I'm, I'm sorry, Baba, not to interrupt you, but I just yeah. want to make sure we don't gloss over it. You said on Saturday, uh, I believe at 10 o'clock, you're going to gather. And if you could say where, and um, it is uh, a street naming. And if you can say uh, the elder that the street is named for, and uh, Baba G. Tuayusi, and explain who these people are, because this is Harlem Network News, and we don't want anybody to walk away without clear information. So if you Absolutely. can do that, and then move on. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, thank you for that. So, thank so you for your time. Thank G. You. founder of the East, um, father, revolutionary institution builder, will be honored. Um, He's so much more than that. We could just do a show on on educator. G2. We need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then the other person is Sam Penn, and Sam uh, again found him one of the active members of Brooklyn Core, and then also uh, chair of the Fort Greene Senior Citizen Center, which, by the way, was a or is a a senior citizen center with some of the most activist seniors on the scene, and so you know. Uh, those two, by the way, let me just do a quick history. Sam Penn, G2 AUC, Al Van, and Reverend Herbert Daughtry were the four who really began that movement in Brooklyn after um, uh, one, of the, one of those serious killers there, and the name escapes me right now. And they Randy were, Evans. Randy, Randy Evans, thank you. Yes, and yes. So um, they were serious organizers in our area. But then, so Saturday morning, the naming ceremony, then the remembrance ceremony, and then simultaneously now, you will have other activities going on for the children. There will not be the um, symposium that normally goes on okay. uh, on Saturday mornings. 
because of the name and, and so on. But Saturday afternoon, we jump off with Molly Wap. Uh, we're looking at Broadway in Brooklyn, and they'll be doing theater excerpts. And then a um, sister from Madagascar, Razia Saeed. And then uh, a sister who, I think she was she from Chicago or something, but one parent is Puerto Rican, one is from the Congo, she lived in the Congo, and yes. she knocks it out the park. Yeah, she it, was at the Ancestors of Tribute, yes. Yes, and uh, in Kumu Kateli. So they'll be performing, and then we end off with the Brooklyn Cultural Arts Coalition, which are youth dancers. Now, and this is important to understand that that's a very significant part of our program. We end off with dancers, but in this case, we're also ending off with youth dancers, all right, so that young people can feel that they're connected to this. It ain't like they're going to go off to the handball court and listen to the other music. And then Sunday, the Ohio Players Review, and then Coco Gonzaga, and then Diaspora Meets Afro Horn, which is our jazz segment. And um, we're paying tribute to many of the artists who perform both at the East and at festival. And then uh, reggae uh, luminary Johnny Osborne. And then we go back to our closing um, with forces of nature. So All it's right. really, yeah, it's a powerful, but listen, uh, uh, it, it's so important, Terry, to understand something. We are doing this thing, A, on a shoestring, in fact, I don't know, April, if it is a shoestring. We might not even have shoes on. <laughs> we decided to do this thing about three months ago because the city was hemming and hawing, hemming and hawing, hemming and hawing. And we are in a catch-22. And we kept waiting and waiting. And finally, the decision was made and we moved forward. Uh, but the speed with which we have pulled this together the energy that's been exhibited by all of the staff and the volunteers and on the leadership of uh, Dr. Segun Shabaka. Yes, uh, yes, Dr. You know, I, I, I gotta tell you something. My wife and I were talking about this and she was telling me this is probably gonna be one of our best ones. And what it made me think about is I'm growing up, there was some times in the house where we didn't have a real great meal. And my mother would put something of this together, a little bit of this left over and a little bit of this, and man, when that thing was finished, it was one of the best meals. And I'm saying that this may be one of our best festivals yet, given all of the struggle that we have gone through to make it happen. So I'm encouraging all of your viewers, come on out yes, and be please. a part of this historic event. Yes, yes. thank you. Uh, thank you for that. And um, it's a common story, uh, Harlem Network News. Um, just doing what we do. Um, it's out of passion, it's out of love, it's out of commitment, but we make it happen. And we're looking to, so if we're making it happen where we are and with what we have, imagine what we can do with more. So it's very important to donate to Harlem Network News, harlemnetworknews.com, very important to donate to the African International African Arts Festival. Very important. We as a people are consumers. So we must use our funds to support our institution. That is nature building. It's very important. And I promise you, if you come out to festival, you're gonna really enjoy it. You're gonna feel the love. You're gonna get the experience. You're gonna see whoever you haven't seen in a long time. So it's going to be a total blessing. And um, if you're unable to come out, um, support, uh, get online. Everybody pretty much knows how to do that. Where do they go, April? You know, because a lot of times there are challenges to view online and pay online. Where do they go? What are the steps? If you can just share that uh, with our audience. Yeah, everything is housed on the main official website of the organization. So um, through that website, they can buy advanced tickets if they wanna go in person or they can go to that website and there's gonna be a link or a button where they can do the pay-per-view. So mm -hmm. that website again is www.iaafestival.org um, and I'll spell it out, I-A-A-F-E-S, 
T-I-V-A-L dot org. And that one place will is like the house of where all the different rooms are, the pay-per-view room, the advance tickets, the lineup, how to donate. So it's really centralized in that one place. Okay, thank you so much. And um, is there a phone number, uh, you know, now that the festival hasn't exactly started yet, but is there a phone number that uh, our audience can call? You know, because sometimes uh, we're all experts now, but if someone is trying to, you know, press the button and it's not happening and they're trying to see it, what is there a number that they can call to get some support? Ahead yes. Of time? Thank you. It, it's area code 718-638-6700. That, that's the, the, the um, number to the headquarters of the festival, 718 Six three eight six seven zero zero. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And um, I do just want to share that um, Harlem Network News will be coming out to cover uh, some of the festival activities live. Um, we're coordinating that uh, with just Sister Sharon and the media uh, tent. And we certainly will be there uh, to salute uh, the street naming uh, for Brother G2 and uh, the brother from the um, the the senior Sam Penn, yes, yeah. Sam Penn, yes, yes, because that is very very significant. And once again, these are milestones in our community, Absolutely. and we have to keep our uh, traditions going and uh, continue. Um, just before we go, because we are just um, almost out of time, um, if you or uh, to either one of you can just share about some of the activities that happen year round um, that the festival is doing. It's not just this, you know, I know there have been some workshops on the doulas and the midwives that I have uh, appreciated and some with the doctors on COVID. So if you could just share, and certainly um, we have had uh, Dr. Maulana Karenga on Harlem Network News several times, and we are very grateful uh, for um, our uh, really executive uh, person, Brother Ruby, for connecting us with um, uh, Baba Segun and really making that happen. And I know that uh, you had uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Julius Garvey on. So um, there are a lot of pins and things that uh, come together uh, with festivals. So if you just share a little bit about what happens and then we're just gonna focus on this weekend. Okay. Well, Terry, let me just say we do have a lot of things that go on throughout the course of the year, but uh, given the time constraint, we're just looking from here until the end of the year. Right. And we've got festival, and then we're looking at, uh, well, in August, be the um, Dr. Garvey's uh, celebration, and we usually have an event then. Now, a lot of these have not been firmed up yet because we're really just into festival. Absolutely. So you look Absolutely. in August, then um, October, we're looking to have a Oh, man. <laughs> That's uh, OK. Tag team, uh, Sister April, if you will just uh, share. I, I think what he was about to say was that there's a, um, there's a contemplation of doing something in honor of uh, the founder of the East, Baba. So cool. Oh, there he is. We, Baba, we lost you. Oh. We but lost it. It's okay. Thank you. You were, said, you were talking about October. Can you go back to October? In October, we're looking to have a, uh, I used to say gala, but I was corrected to say a gala, gala. Uh, for the festival. And uh, ah. look to make that a, a major affair, but we're going to get to first. Uh, we will continue our GoFundMe efforts. And then November, Black Solidarity Day. And then in December, we end out with Kwanzaa. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Well, it has been um, an honor to have you all here and um, particularly close to um, my heart and close to the heart of Harlem and the Harlems of the world to just uh, speak about an iconic event that happens every year. And it's always good for us to be looking forward to uh, events and also creating the tradition here on these soils. And I think that uh, festival has um, been very significant in that. And it keeps us grounded 
and it keeps us knowing of what our possibilities are. So uh, that's where we are, and that is uh, what Harlem Network News is about. Um, we want to also thank um, our major sponsor, which is New Harlem Coffee. It's an incredible, uh, wonderful, culturally packaged uh, coffee. And you can go to Harlem, uh, newharlemcoffee.com and purchase the coffee, which helps to keep us on the air. And also our audience, as you know, uh, it, it's a struggle, but it's a struggle well worth it, and we're still here. So thank you very much. Um, Sister April, if you'd like to give a brief closing statement, something you'd like the audience to remember, and then we'll have you close us out, uh, Baba Adeyemi. Thank you. Oh, um, can I defer to Baba Adeyemi? Um, just, just out of respect for my elder and, okay. and yeah, if, if you don't, if that's okay. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. okay. Reversing, I was having <laughs> the elder uh, shut it well, down and close it, but it's no, okay. no, no, no. I don't no, want to no. reverse. I just no, want no. to give him all my time. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yes, have the last word. Okay, yeah. okay. Thank you. Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. April, if I if I miss anything, please. But, uh, <laughs> first of all, just want to thank you so very much for the opportunity, Terry, to be here with you on the Harlem Network News. Um, it's always a pleasure just to be able to connect with our sisters and brothers up in Harlem because we, we back and forth. And so that's Absolutely. an important thing. Um, this is a very significant year for us. We have struggled to get to this stage um, and we are grateful for the participation and the support of our community. And we urge everyone to come on out uh, for vendors. Unfortunately, it's a lot. No more spaces available. Okay. Um, just be in touch with Sister Ellen and uh, put you on the waiting list for next year and hopefully we can do something. It's a good problem to have, quite frankly. Okay. We and um, we just we just hope folks will come on out. I'm not sure what weather is going to look like, but um, we, we have improved some of the things. By the way, uh, Terry, you know that we have now put uh, video monitors up on the sides of the stage, so if you're Way in the yes, back, beautiful. You can see the artist, and of course, most importantly, we'd like you to uh, plug into the pay per view if you're not able to make it, and share it with your friends. You might even just want to do a viewing party. Absolutely, and just have folks come hang out and um, enjoy it. So we want to thank you, and uh, we are into our 50th year. I'm seeing yes. the habu. 50 is gold. Thank you so much, Terry. Okay, thank you and uh, blessings and thank you for sharing and for whatever. And this That's is Harlem whatever. Network News and I'm Terry Wisdom. Have a great day and I'll see you at festival. Thank you. And you can also tune in and watch this if you missed it. We're gonna promote it. We'll throw it up on YouTube tomorrow. And anybody that is listening, please share on your pages. We have the capacity to do that. That's our drumbeat, Harlem yeah. Network. News coming to you live. Thank you.